Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Nebula. I need to There get are a some few water. things I love on this earth as much as a good television show. It's been that way since I was a kid, and honestly, I have to be a little cautious after praising first episodes and first seasons because I think I have a tendency to get caught up in what I see as the limitless potential of a TV show instead of just talking about the material put in front of me. But that potential is so exciting to me, especially getting to watch shows improve. There are some days that I'm streaming and it feels so late. It's only 8.45. I don't know why. I think it's because I got up early today. So it's felt like a really long day. I, keep, I It feels like it's midnight. Let's face it, in many ways, the medium of television has always been film's disreputable little brother. Cursed from the very beginning to- Did I miss the- or was that the ad? Be so excited to after praise- that My bad. My bad. This video is brought to Wait, you by Nebula. Watch it's been that way since I was a kid, and honestly, oh. I have to be a little cautious after praising first episodes and first seasons, because I think I have a tendency to get caught up in what I see as the limitless potential of a TV show, instead of just talking about the material put in front of me. But that potential is so exciting to me, especially getting to watch shows improve throughout their early years, from Babylon 5 and Seinfeld to more recent shows like Succession or Better Call Saul. I love being able to watch these projects become more confident and robust in their storytelling, characters, and performances, and locate their strengths in a way that just wasn't possible without the trial and error of the early going. Let's face it, in many ways, the medium of television has always been film's disreputable little brother. Cursed from the very beginning to often put selling soap and shaving cream ahead of artistry. Great TV can and has risen above that. And when that- It's why, it's why before television, uh, before like, uh, television really became, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Before it became like prestige TV, film actors didn't do TV. The The adage was basically, if you were a film actor and you were doing TV, it meant your career was like dying. It meant that you had fallen down. It You had fallen down from a great height. And... um you know, if if you if you got into silver into the silver screen of acting, you didn't go back to TV, and then prestige TV changed the game, and it's why so many, um, so many big A list film actors have been a part of TV shows. You know, it's hard to find. It's hard to find a big A-list actor who has like they 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 do exist but who have not navigated over to TV. That happens, I think it can be an incredible thing. And to me, maybe the single most defining aspect of television, the thing that makes it feel totally distinct from film is how much time you spend with its characters. Whether it's drama or comedy, I have such a different relationship as a viewer to Don Dr David Chase arguably created Prestige TV with The Sopranos. He still harbored views of TV being inferior to movies. Uh, I didn't know that he felt that way. <laughs> after 92 episodes of Mad Men or Daphne Moon after 264 episodes of Frasier than I do with any film character. You get to know these characters like the back of your hand their strengths, their foibles, and finding delight in the ways that they can still surprise you after years of spending time with them. I'm not saying that this long-term relationship to the audience makes them better characters than what film has to offer, just that it's unquestionably unique. And I'm afraid the last 10 years- You know what it's like? It's, it's like you really form a relationship with characters in TV before TV, you know, became these limited se limited series where or not even just limited series but before tv went from being 20 to 22 episodes on average per season to now like six seven or eight episodes but 
It was, oh, this is a terrifying pause. My God. Um, but the thing with TV is like, it was, you know, t- TV was, was comfort. You always had an episode of a show and you live, you know, you got to live in that world. You, you formed relationships with the characters in the show and so it was okay that there would be like filler episodes of you know lots of filler episodes of seasons because there were so many episodes in a season that the filler episodes didn't feel wasted like that was a joy of watching television you know you look at a show like lost and not every show had these you know, not every episode had these major plot moments and oftentimes it would introduce things that then didn't go anywhere but it was like this world that you were living in where major things didn't have to happen every single episode and when major things did happen they felt even even bigger for it and then some shows would take a break in the middle like mid-season finales yeah and you know i i like <laughs> This is just me personally, but I love the random musical episode, right? Like you have a random musical episode in a show that's not a musical show because it's got 24 fucking episodes. So they can have a random musical episode at like episode 17. Grey's Anatomy. Yes. Television has seen that uniqueness diminish. HBO's Buffy. Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon just wrapped up season two with a truncated eight episode season. It will probably not be back on our screen for literally years. Insane. This feels like the culmination of a trend that's been going on for over a decade. Less episodes and far, far more time between those episodes. I think it's becoming a real problem. And in this video, I want to go over why and how I think it represents television giving up one of its greatest strengths. Before I get into it, I should remind you to hit all the buttons and subscribe and the bell and, you know, the rest of it. Oh, and one thing that I'm adding in here at the last minute is that while I was writing this last week, a video from Adam Conover Ah, called How Streaming Destroyed... It's very funny because I've had Adam's video bookmarked and have meant to watch it for like the last week. ...TV went up. There's a decent amount of crossover in what we talk about, so I felt like I should mention it, but I think we ultimately took our videos in pretty different directions. It's a good one though and i'm gonna link that one down in the description in case you want to check it out as well okay i know no one really watched it but the star wars show acolyte had a flashback episode in its penultimate episode episode seven just killed the whole vibe because acolyte doesn't have 24 episodes there's no fucking time it's a waste when you do something like a flashback episode like that that's how i felt with um with the bear it's like there were so there was such an emphasis on flashbacks and it's like we don't have the number of episodes that shows used to have and so knowing that it takes like you know two one two years in between seasons you have a much shorter number of episodes you just feel disconnected from the show and it feels like um you know it feels like character development is limited when you do shit like that so this is the part where i might lose some people because for a moment at least i want to talk about some very very old television i'm sure you've heard of star trek you know, the original series, Kirk, Spock, and the gang. But there's a decent chance you haven't heard of Trek creator Gene Roddenberry's show before that, The Lieutenant. It's a good show. I like it. It's remembered as being ahead of its time and canceled far too soon, lasting only one season. The thing is, though, when you actually sit down to watch that season, you realize it's 29 episodes long. To put that in perspective, Stranger Things, which began in 2016, has only managed five more episodes. Lost was super influential, I agree. Four seasons, which was a show that ran from September of 63 to April of 64. I understand this isn't a perfect comparison. Let me just just go back. 
Let me just go back. Things, which began in 2016, has only managed five more episodes than The Lieutenant in four seasons, which was a show that ran from September of 63 to April of 64. That's insane. I understand this isn't a perfect comparison. Stranger Things episodes are much longer, but I think it manages to speak to how different TV was back then compared to today. Before really 2013 or so, any show as successful as Stranger Things would have been in its viewers' lives much, much more. Mm -hmm. New seasons would probably feel less like a movie-like event and more like inviting an old friend back after not seeing them for a few months. And that may sound corny, but I put it that way very purposefully. The weekly schedule, the sheer amount mm -hmm. of stories and plots that you saw these characters go through, tuning in every week and weaving them into the fabric of your life, it all added up to something that gave you a very different relationship than you have with a group of characters you see once every two to four years mm -hmm. for a few hours. Now, I'm not That's on... what I said. You feel disconnected from the characters. You feel disconnected from um you feel disconnected from the show's themes. It feels oftentimes unfinished and not satisfying and it's just not the same relationship that you have with a show that has more episodes under the illusion that this is going to come back there's no world where people under 60 all decide to start setting aside their thursday nights and making sure to be in front of their tv you often at a have to do a recap before getting in yes and that's fine I, like most people, prefer to watch my TV on my schedule, not on some TV networks. But there are other things from old television that I think recent TV could take some lessons from. I've cited this before, but to me, the biggest TV news story that broke this year is this chart showing the most stream shows of 2023, nearly all of which are old shows. I feel like not nearly enough attention has been paid to this fact. I've seen a lot of articles, including one from the New York Times, citing nostalgia as the biggest reason here. And while I'm sure that plays a huge role, I just don't see it. I'm sure people in the US were nostalgic for their childhoods in the economic downturn of the early no, 70s. No, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's nostalgia. I think it's like, okay, so you're, you're home from work, right? You wanna put something on, maybe you're, Maybe you're cooking, maybe you're just relaxing, maybe you're getting ready to go to bed and you just want to put it on an episode of a show, right? These shows give you the ability to do that. Or maybe you are looking for something to watch long term. You're like, oh, I want to watch something. You're like, okay, well, this show is six episodes, you know, binge that I'm done. Um, I'll, I'll rewatch lost or you know whatever show that you might have uh watched in the past when it aired but yes it is comfort absolutely it's comfort 70s but you didn't see reruns of i love lucy smashing then current hits like all in the family in the ratings there's an audience for what tv has become but i think these numbers indicate that there's still a massive audience for what tv had been for 50 plus years before that too and that audience is not really being served in this current television landscape. So they're turning to older shows, including ones that are probably new to them and weren't even massive hits in their time, mm -hmm. like Suits. Now, I'm not going to claim that Suits is the height of artistic television. It's not. Nothing against it, but I was a little baffled that this Zorrell, was the show thank that you for the TikTok 15 latched months. onto. Honestly, it probably would make my months. top 15 lawyer shows. Still, with its mostly episodic format and a nine-season run that aired yearly for almost a decade, it's a show that's emblematic of everything that this new era of TV mm -hmm. has left behind. Outside of really just network cop and doctor shows mostly aimed at older viewers. From an industry perspective, I think that it's underrated that you know the characters and basic story beats. You watch a modern streamer and you miss one crucial piece of dialogue. You don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. You zone out for like five seconds and you've missed an entire storyline. It's clearly been a disaster. All these big streaming services have huge churn problems. People cancel their subscriptions right after the show they're watching ends. And I think longer seasons would help a lot with that. But more importantly, I think the old system was far, far better for writers creatively. Shows like The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, and Mad Men were all so lauded at the time for breaking away from the conventions of television. You wouldn't find a case of the week with a morally upright lead here. 
No, these were serialized shows with morally ambiguous characters at their center. They were rightfully applauded for breaking from conventions and pushing boundaries. Now though, with the benefit of hindsight, I think it's worth considering that these three shows, along with some other anti-hero favorites from that era like The Shield, weren't just great because of the ways they broke from TV convention, but also in the ways that they embraced those conventions. All of those showrunners had tons of experience writing old school TV, from the X-Files to sitcoms mm -hmm. like Becker. Sopranos creator David Chase may have felt really frustrated by the limitations of the very episodic Rockford Files, which he wrote for for a long time, but he brought all of that episodic experience to The Sopranos to craft serialized episodes that still feel satisfying in and of themselves, with real beginnings, middle, and ends that actually land that don't just feel like formless, here's 55 more minutes of a long movie that you get with a lot of streaming shows now. And I think the same is true for all those shows I mentioned. Mad Men works as a complete text. Season 5 works as a satisfying 13 episode arc of TV. Which by the way also feels luxuriously long in today's diminished 8 to 10 episode norm. And an episode like season 5's At the Codfish Ball hits like a freight train as an individual episode of the show. With a statement about these characters, and especially Sally, that feels unique to this specific script. Episodes have their own very unique identity. Something that showrunners coming straight from indie films I feel often struggle with. Crafting episodes that work both in the context of the season as a whole and as an entertaining piece of TV on its own. Mad Men was more cinematic than your average show in 2007, but it also understood the strengths of its own medium in a way that far more expensive movie-like streaming shows just oh. don't today. Cowboy Bebop. Now, anyone who's read a lot about TV production knows that everyone involved tends to describe creating a 22 plus episode season of television as exhausting, difficult, and almost impossible. For that reason alone, I think coming down from that number to a more reasonable 15 to 18 would be ideal. Still, I can't help but love those long seasons. Yeah, and the other thing is, is when television seasons got shorter, that was what also contributed to decreasing wages and was part of the, um, you know, was part of the demands during the writer and actor strikes is shorter televisions, uh, shorter seasons of TV means less work, le you know, less money. And it has negatively impacted the industry above the line and below the line um yeah decrease job security exactly because you book a job you're lucky to book a job and then that job is only for you know it's, it's for 10 weeks and that's the only job you've got and so you need to be able to stretch that money out for maybe the rest of the year of how when a show is so good, like twenty, like sure, twenty-two episodes is long, but if for them, like four to five episodes, just do zany, off the wall, experimental stuff. Yes, like Buffy with the musical episode or Hush, Infants Drunk Buffy episode. Yes, it allows shows to kind of veer off and and do things that are not necessary, are not necessarily major. Uh, you know, episodes that are like majorly moving the narrative forward. And people, sh you know, we, we still showed up to watch all those episodes because of the connection that we had with the show and with the characters. And simply having shorter seasons of TV means you don't spend as much time with those characters. So you're just you're not as connected to them. Uh, so just for just to give you an idea of how drastically seasons of tv shortened in the um in the early 2000s programs were an average of 20 episodes per season and by 2017 that had dropped to an average of nine episodes per season um and of course the increase in shorter seasons 
was, uh, you know, w w went hand in hand with streaming taking over the industry because streaming platforms prioritize quantity over quality. And by that, having, having a, you know, a shit ton of shows, constantly producing new shows, having an enormous quantity of shows, rather than having the quality of longer seasons, rather than like the quality of fewer shows. How many opportunities there are to play with the show's tones and conventions. There's this idea in contemporary TV fandom that only the destination matters. That a TV show should be about its season-long story and nothing else. Often, these discussions will use the word filler to describe more episodic monster or case of the week episodes that don't push the season-long narrative forward. And I have a real bone to pick with this line of thinking. Filler, as it applies to TV, did make sense in the very specific context of anime where episodes were produced to keep the show going while they waited for new manga chapters to adapt. That makes sense, but the way it's been applied to American TV is often really frustrating. Something like the X-Files episode Ice, in which Mulder and Scully get caught up in a great riff on The Thing, does almost nothing to push forward the series mythology. And it's not filler. It is, in fact, an example of what the show is best at and its defining legacy. There's some great mythology focused. I haven't episodes, seen Agents but if of that's Shield. What you're watching the show, but that for, is a good, you're gonna that's come a good example. Yeah. In the end, because the X Files was greatest when it was doing what it was created to do, being a '90s update on the Kolchak the Night Stalker Monster of the Week formula. It's at its weakest when it's trying to piece together nine seasons of lore that stop being coherent after season five. And yes, I do recognize that is a fault of the show. But I think approaching the Monster of the Week episodes like they're inherently mm -hmm. lesser is a depressing side effect of the last 10 years of streaming TV. The fact is, the Monster of the Week episodes are formulaic, but they allow for far more tonal experimentation than most serialized streaming shows do. Something yeah, so, you know, one argument, one pro of a shorter series is that it allows more effective linear storytelling so when you don't have these filler episodes then you are you know you're 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 telling the story in a straighter line and yet i feel like those filler episodes of all these shows that we used to love um I, I I feel like that was a way to expand on the storytelling and expand on the character development. And it wasn't something where it was like out the gate you are rushing to cram so much into a single episode because you only have six episodes to tell the entire story you want to tell. And a lot of it ends up on, uh, you know, a lot of it ends up being cut out because you only have six episodes. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that like every season of TV that has a limited number of episodes or every TV show that has a limited number of episodes is bad like there are a lot of amazing prestige TV shows. I uh or sorry, uh limited series. I just feel like overall the change that has occurred from TV being as we you know as we've been talking about it where it had longer seasons. It uh, it was able to like tonally and narratively play around more. I feel like I feel like uh, so much has been lost from reducing the episodes. Grown to appreciate the length and brevity of British shows. Are you, are you my mom? <laughs> mom, is this your account? like Netflix's My you, mom loves which British on the surface drama. is less formulaic episode to episode ends up being TV far is more entertainment. samey yes. as the show's tone is isn't as comfortable taking wild swings like X-Files was. X-Files could go from an earnestly mean and scary episode like Home to pure comedy like Small Potatoes with ease. 
With you, you're going to have this dark and broadly satirical tone in just about every episode. When I look at these two shows and how they operate side by side, I can't help but feel shocked that X-Files is considered the old-fashioned one. There's just so much more variety there, and a large part of that is the amount of episodes that they had to work with. Now, I understand that when I make an argument for the kind of TV that produce suits, many will see that as an argument for embracing mediocrity. After all, Suits, sorry to beat on it again, is a fairly cheap show, especially by today's standards. Not very visually ambitious, and is probably more notable for its consistency than its high quality. I mean, isn't the massive budgets of current TV with its larger scope and focused storytelling superior to some okay USA network show? That makes sense as an argument. And as someone who loved TV back in the 2000s, I can tell you the smart critical opinion to have back then was that American TV would be better if it were more like television in the UK. And no disrespect to UK TV, which has produced a lot of great stuff, but it's oh. just not a perspective that I agree with. <gasps> Tight, focused, shorter shows can be great. Of course they can be. But when they're not, I often find myself wishing that they had just been a movie instead. Yes. The fact is, I think TV... I feel like short seasons of shows, when, when, when they're not effective storytelling, when it's like, it just kind of feels... You know, when they still feel like they have filler episodes, you go, this could have been a movie. It's the same as like, this meeting could have been an email. <laughs> this This series could have been a movie seasons that are structured like films run just as much risk of feeling mediocre and bloated as longer more mm -hmm. episodic seasons do if not more so battlestar galactica season two with its mixture of ongoing season-long narratives and episodic problems for the characters to solve is 20 episodes long and it's far better paced than say netflix's lost in space season one which had 10 episodes that feel like they could have been shaved down to four to six. And once we start getting that low, especially four, like why not just make it a movie? I think once you're basically working with something that's feature length, you're not using any of the things that TV offers as opposed to film. And I'd probably rather just see it in a theater anyway. I'll always be a little bit obsessed with the idea of fixing those Jessica Jones and Luke Cage Netflix shows. I know that only gets goofier as the years go on, but these were two shows that I was very excited for when they started, and my disappointment in them is when I really started to think about the drawbacks of the Netflix model for the first time. On the surface, every season of these shows seems too long. They fill out 13 episodes, but have enough material for maybe eight. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. So it made sense to read that the writers of Luke Cage were begging Netflix for less episodes in its final season. Taking the step back though, like that just seems completely insane. We're talking about shows with a PI and hero for hire, characters created to constantly generate new stories that lend themselves to having any episodic plots in their shows. But no, because this was a mid 2010 streaming show, it had to be mm -hmm. serialized with almost no episodic elements. They could not lean into their lead characters' obvious strengths as story engines. Like, yes, something like the format of NCIS is limiting as hell, but I don't think I can honestly say that this commitment to ultra serialization was artistically a better format for these shows. I think there's a balance that can be struck here, and for too long- Right, because when you're serial serialized versus episodic, you don't have the freedom to play around. You don't have the freedom to like, Oh, you know what? Let's uh let's let's ex let's do a one-off episode here, right? Streaming shows have been terrified to embrace that balance and the apparently uncool old TV aspects that come with it, which leads me to HBO's Perry Mason. God, I know this video is all over the place. Just hear me out. Mm -hmm. When HBO announced they were remaking Perry Mason, I was through the roof excited. Now, part of that is I'm a sicko who loves ancient TV and has seen tons of the 1957 lawyer drama. But the larger part of it is what I thought they could be attempting. Oh, See, Perry Mason Burn Notice is, is great. about as old TV case of the week as you can possibly get. And I thought HBO would try to use that format while bringing the level of production, nuance, and polish 
that we know they're capable of. Basically, rescuing the format from the old networks and showing it to an audience in an exciting new light. Something that would feel bold and unexpected in the landscape of 2020's prestige TV. Honestly, they could call it elevated episodic TV or something obnoxious like that, and I wouldn't even care. I'd just be so happy to see great TV writers tackle the format with HBO resources and HBO expectations. But that just didn't happen. The show came and went and was a solid, very serialized noir where poor Perry didn't even become a lawyer until deep into the first season. And honestly, it broke my heart because watching episodes of Homicide Life on the Street, Hill Street Blues, or LA Law, I think there's still so much life left here. So much quality being left on the table and so much being left behind in these show's ultra serialized short seasons. Now those ultra serialized short seasons should exist, but they shouldn't be the only format synonymous with quality TV. Episodic TV has Yes, exactly. No one is saying no one is saying that serialized short seasons are are bad, that we should never have them. It's just that with all of television following following that format, or even with shows that are longer episodes, but because they're serialized, they just don't have the flexibility and they are stumbling. Um, and it feels like, okay, these are, you know, ugh, I, I don't even want to watch these episodes. Like I'll just skip to them, but you can't still because it's serialized. And so the point is not that all TV should be one way or another way, it's that the way that TV changed and how so much of it follows this format now uh, means that we have lost out on things that made longer seasoned shows and uh, episodic shows so great. And can be amazing. And I would love to see it more outside of the old networks and their aging cop and hospital franchises. I understand that as a format, episodic TV has some drawbacks. And I'm not trying to go back to the days where it seemed like all characters on television got the men in black memory wipe between episodes. <laughs> I often think about how much more interesting some of these old shows would be if that wasn't the case. Nor do I want to do away with serialized elements. I love serialization on TV, and I always have. I just think it can often be used better within the scaffolding of episodic stories. And for a while there, it felt like TV was getting better and better at melding the two together into something truly interesting and special. But somewhere along the way, that progress got lost, and many in the industry ended up thinking that serialization and Like, one of my fav- okay, Breaking Bad is serialized, right? But because Breaking Bad is a show that's not being made today it had it like was a melding of serialized but also had uh an episodic element like the one of my favorite episodes from breaking bad is the fly episode where almost the entirety of the episode is walt battling to catch this fly like it's obviously you know it's a metaphor but it's also literal that walt is walt spends the entire episode trying and losing his mind to, uh losing his mind while trying to catch the fly and it's a legendary episode absolutely oh that's directed by ryan johnson oh i didn't know that or the one where he's retired, he tries to fill up his time to feel fulfilled. Exactly. Exactly. And I just feel like if a show such as Breaking Bad is made after Breaking Bad was made, we we don't get those episodes because they would just end up being cut. Like they would it would not serve uh, you know, it would be seen as not serving a big enough purpose to the story and so because you know the plot isn't majorly moving forward gotta go 
He directed The Fly and Ozymandias. Oh, two of the best apps. Yeah. Seasons were the shortcut to quality. I think that's limiting what television has the potential to be, and I want to see TV embrace a future where it's neither wallowing in the past and not moving forward, but also isn't terrified of embracing so many of the things that people loved about it, that people are going back to 20-year-old shows because of what they still love about it. I think that future is possible. But at the end of the day, if you ask me if I prefer an eight episode expensive looking prestige show format or the sprawling and sometimes far more messy format of like a Star Trek Deep Space Nine. How does the boys fit into this? Um, what do you mean? Like what kind of show the boys is or. Um, I mean, the boys is another show. The boys is another show where we have to wait. An hour, and a half, an hour and a half. We have to wait like a year and a half in between seasons. There's only eight episodes a season. So it's a, you know, it's a shorter season uh, TV show that is heavily, heavily serialized. And it's a show that I would love. I would love for it to have, uh, you know, an, an episodic element. I would love for it to have episodes that are not uh you know not crucial to the plot per se but allows more character development allows us to deepen our relationship with the characters and i i love the boys like i have a really great time watching the boys um i i do think though the show would be better served by having uh by having those episodes you know getting more into the individual characters and like having you know having one-offs where like maybe they go do something maybe they go fight some they do some boy shit that doesn't just have to do with taking down homelander per se the fact that there's no frenchy huey kimiko master yes the last season it felt like we jumped so much from from the kimiko and frenchy to Frenchie and the one guy like there was just I I genuinely you watch the show you go you when when something like that happens in a show you go did I miss an episode like did I miss something in the last season that's true actually the episode where they explore black noir was actually great yes more stuff like that self-contained stories in some episodes of the boys would be so fun to watch a hundred percent I'm taking DS9 every time it's always fun to talk TV, but now I want to talk Nebula. Nebula, Nebula can we take an hour to celebrate the leftovers or Watchmen? I'll set the clock right now. It's a shame the boys is a great world and they never let the characters breathe uh, and react to the smaller elements of the world. Right, it's like you, 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 you build up this amazing world and you have a show that... You know, it's a it's a great concept, and you've got great characters. Let it breathe. You know, let let the uh, let let the characters really really develop to their fullest. Let them have these like side missions, and um, you know, more more flashbacks, more more backstory. Um, flat, yeah. Um. Especially with a show like The Boys. You know? Be, uh, they've explored it excessively. Well, I feel like... if I feel like with The Boys, some, like, some of the problems that The Boys experiences... Or, you know, some of the problems we found with The Boys, especially the later seasons, could be solved by you know, could be solved by having episodes that are not, um, that are not, uh, serialized, right? Where you wouldn't have to have some, you know, b big, crazy, gruesome thing happen every single episode. Like someone's head doesn't have to explode. Someone's, uh, you know, there doesn't have to be a superhero exploding out of a rectum, that type of thing.
Anyway, remember, there's a difference between filler episodes that are <sighs> filler episodes in serialized shows where they feel like a waste, where it feels frustrating because you have a limited, you know, you have shorter episode or shorter seasons. Um, you have a, uh, you have shorter seasons and because it's serialized. And so when you have let, you know, when you have less flexibility that way, then the episodes that are of the filler kind are more frustrating than they can be with non-serialized shows, longer, you know, longer seasoned shows. Mad Men did the musical episode. Well, I think every show should have a musical episode. I think a musical episode of The Boys would be fucking awesome. I want it. That's that's what I want. I want a musical episode in every single show. Every episode of The Boys is about killing Homelander. That's the issue. Having them do other things would be helpful since the show clearly doesn't want to kill Homelander because he's a good actor. Right. Like, you know, oh, this is not going to be when a homelander is killed yeah like the focus of the boys is killing homelander and yes they have other missions but they're all in the service of killing homelander and i i just think if the boys didn't feel like it had to go at breakneck pace there could be some interesting stuff in that show i mean th there is interesting stuff in that show but you know what i'm saying like um, there, there could be even more freedom and, um, and, uh, uh, you know, feel, feeling even more connected to the characters and having characters who are not the main characters, uh, you know, exploring them and anyway, anyhow, okay, 